Mountain Monday morning code espresso is 30% off as opposed to the normal 10%. So head over to gfuel.com and check out any starter pack, new tubs, or shakers if you're interested. And be sure to use code espresso at checkout. Link in the description below. This game can be pretty punishing. I don't think there's any denying that. But when sometimes it feels like it's an uphill battle, how can you improve? How can you do better? I've seen plenty of people saying their KDs and other stats have been abysmal comparative to recent years, and I totally understand why. Strangely enough, though, I feel like I've done rather well for myself so far in Modern Warfare and keeping up with my stats and keeping the level of play rather high, even given the amount of lobbies that I felt like I was up against the pro roster. So today, I want to share with you guys 12 major tips in helping you improve your game and stats like your KD and all. So let me know if you'd add anything to this list in the comments below. And if you do enjoy this or find any of it insightful, maybe considering that subscribe button if you have not done so already to stay in the loop with all things Modern Warfare and all things Call of Duty on a daily basis. But anyways, let's talk about these tips. We're going to focus on three main areas of focus here in this video. Mental play designed to outwit your opponents and give you the upper hand just by simply your tactics, gunplay and positioning tips, and then sort of a general and out of game discussion as well. And admittedly, there's a small few number of overlaps with some of our general tips from around the launch simply because they were so generalistic. But the majority of these are more focused and a bit more specific in terms of the examples and areas that you can help yourself improve in. So let's start with the mental play. How to think, therefore you are. Mental play, the biggest one here that I end up thinking about whenever I play and think about my gameplay in particular is to use spots that players wouldn't necessarily think of when going on the attack. So the biggest three that I think of immediately are two in ground war and then one in 6v6. Now, of course, there's plenty more like this and you can, once you start to play a little more, understand where more of these may come into play, find your own that work out really well for you. But for me, the three biggest ones that I've found success are, are on the maps of Krovnik Farmland, Karst River Quarry, and Piccadilly. For Krovnik Farmland, the one that always works out well for me, or at least for the most part, is that of the seaside window by hay bales. You can go in that sort of cutaway L, and you can climb up on top of that little roof there, and you can mount some hay bales and jump up on top of that roof there, and then enter in through the second story window. And a lot of the times, players are on that second story, either looking out the window, overlooking the street side of D, or they're looking down the stairs or down below at the lower floor. So when you jump in there, you can use pick off one player maybe say in the window but outside of that not many players are paying attention to it so it's a fantastic spot to get some free kills out of it and then regain a power position in karst river quarry the b flag window is one that i never see players taking advantage of and it's fantastic the clip you'll see on screen right now is a pretty good indication of that you can jump down from the catwalk just above b walk a little bit along that scaffolding or that piping and then jump into the second story window of b and players won't ever expect that at all. Same thing goes for the other side as well. When you're in that mid courtyard, you can actually climb up on those boxes and jump in a second story as well, to which players don't really expect that either. So take advantage of that. And then another one like Piccadilly is there's that jump spot into the shoe store. A lot of players will camp up there and usually have the stairs claymored off. So it's really hard to get in there, but there's that second entryway, which you can do and in the right circumstances can take out some campers with a swift hand of justice. Now, like I said, there's plenty more throughout all of the maps, but take those into account take that sort of would they expect this and then try and apply it into your game if the answer is no they probably wouldn't outside of that in the mental category i would definitely say to try and predict where players are going to be coming from we'll come back to this in a little bit here in some of the tips as well when we talk about map positioning and mini maps but if you know the map well enough if you know the rotation if you can see some of your players on the mini map or you know some action just happened around a corner have your gun up in high traffic areas i make this mistake all the time where i'll die and i'll try and rush right back into the engagement but even though i know that the player is relatively close to me I still sprint right into it and then bam they're right there they turn the corner they're already ready for that gunfight whereas I'm not and then I die again so make sure that you even the playing field by if you know some actions going on around you have your gun up and get ready for that gunfight as is strafe a little bit for that gunfight as well if you end up having to peek a corner make sure you end up having that gun up to give you the best chance possible as well now, let's talk a little bit about some gunplay and positioning outside of this. The first thing that I would definitely say in terms of your gunplay is to know your playstyle and then custom tailor your loadouts 
to match that. So say you're a quick run and gun style of player. Maybe something like double time will help you out in that mobility. It'll allow you to have longer tactical sprint times. Use those mobility attachments to your advantage. Things like your stippled pistol grips, your mobility stocks, and things like that. Those will help you get your gun up faster, but maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to just be a little more passive. Maybe you want to say snipe a little bit. Use one of the grips for a quicker aim time, maybe. Maybe put a bipod on for further sturdiness. Maybe put on a barrel to increase that range. Maybe use overkill to have a better secondary than just the pistol. You know your play style more than me, so use that information of how you play and then tactically build out your loadout to match that to give yourself the best potential to kill. And talking about that, let's just talk about that in general. Give yourself the best ability to secure a kill. Some weapons are definitely better than others, and some have some really good attacks attachments that make them better than the weapons in their class. For example, my favorites are the 5.56 rounds on the AUG. The 10 millimeter rounds on the MP5 as well are absolutely fantastic. Both of those add range, both of those add damage to the weapons, and also things like stopping power rounds as your field order, those are fantastic as well. It's kind of cheesy actually that you can use stopping power rounds with say an LMG and have 100 rounds of that, or maybe even use the Kilo with 100 rounds. It gives you a full magazine of stopping power rounds that give you more damage overall so definitely give that a shot too. equip that when you want to do better use everything at your disposal that can help you get that advantage competitively i'm not saying to cheese the 725 or anything like that but if you have the option to give yourself better damage with different ammunition in your weapon why not especially when it really doesn't have any negative trade-offs moving along though in objective based modes don't abandon the objectives don't be that guy in domination with zero captures or saying kill confirmed with zero tags but bait the objective a little bit. In Kill Confirmed, for example, if you know there's a tag around an area that you're by, keep an eye out for it on the HUD, and when you see it disappear, use that information to either get the immediate drop on the player that captured that tag, or to position yourself better for a gunfight so that you can take them out. Use that information either for an immediate attack or to position yourself better in that situation. Same thing goes with domination, or another mode of the like. If you see somebody's on the flag, a lot of the times it might be a little bit of a guessing game to know exactly where they may be on the flag, but you know somebody's around there so you can either let them take it and then kill them when they jump off the flag or you can end up trying to peek corners and challenge them on the flag so use that kind of stuff the things that in game situationally will give you the advantage of where a player is use that to your advantage and try and strike while the opportunity is there when in gunfights though let's talk about some mobility overall let's talk about how you want to position yourself but also how you want to get around the map personally to me i'd say especially in things like ground war which i play all the time avoid the middle areas if you're playing solely for KD. The best example I have here of this is probably Kravnik Farmland. The middle map between B, C, and D is an absolute death wish if one team holds two of those flags. But if you end up taking the far out approach on, say, cliff sides or the hills, and you try and go out to flank and wrap around, you'll have a much better chance of moving up the map unscathed. Granted, you may still encounter some campers out there, maybe one or two with a sniper, but at least it's better than plenty of mounted head glitchers overlooking your spawn where you'd end up spawning street side. So that's something that might take a couple extra seconds, but maybe well worth it in the long run. Additionally, when we talk about movements and positioning in gunfights, crouching used to mitigate recoil, but as of a recent update here, I think about two weeks back now at this point, it kind of nullified that entire situation. And I think that was because some recoil mechanics were kind of broken and therefore they kind of took out the mitigation altogether. I don't know if it's going to come back if it does utilize that, but for the time being, the best thing I can say is to find some cover if you're in close range, you can hold down that trigger, but if you're long distance, burst or tap firing is definitely definitely something that is really helpful. Additionally, if you don't have much cover, moving and strafing in a gunfight makes it way harder for your enemy to stay on target and therefore may help you secure that kill a little bit. Granted, we don't have anything like, say, a Modern Warfare 3 variation of Stalker where it is something you move like a brisk walking pace side to side, but it is something you can still use to your advantage even just ever so slightly, especially at a distance. If a player at a distance sees an enemy moving, they're probably not going to hit near as many shots as they should to end up getting that kill. Additionally, avoid staying stationary. This is one big thing that I've found myself guilty of at times. It's not something that every single time it happens, but there will be moments where I'm like, ooh, I should probably get out of here. I've been here a little too long. This goes for just a general location or if I'm, say, mounted going for challenges. The one thing that I can definitely say talking mounted 
mounted. If you're going for, say, mounted kills, it's easy to actually pop in and out of the mounts when you get the hang of it. You could run up to a window, mount it, secure the kill, and mount out and be on your way, all within the blink of an eye. Staying there for too long just makes you an increasingly easy target to, to catch on to. A sniper in the distance may see you, whereas you may not see them, and you're not moving, making their shot just a straight point and click. In terms of staying in a single area, well, maybe dip in and out of cover. That's the best way that I can suggest as well. If a player knows that you're in an area, if they know you're in a building, say a building overlooking a spawn, chances are they will definitely be gunning for you at one point. So to vary up those play styles to change your positioning, not only gives you the upper hand in terms of the advantage because you can bait where you just were, but also it gives that mind game coming back to some of the mental play that we talked about earlier. The final positioning tip we'll talk about here, and this comes down to, again, the mini map and the information. This is where we see some of that crossover, but things like your non-lethal support kill streaks of personal UAV, UAV, and advanced UAV are solid for keeping you aware of where at least the chunk of the players are. It's still kind of a bummer that there's no hard counter to Ghost or a perk that fights for that favorite spot in tier 2, but even with Ghost, you can still at least learn from the flow of the map, see where some dots may be on the enemy team, and where players will be, and subsequently where they are not, so they could be coming, but that information allows you to make predicted decisions, and hopefully for the better, in your gunfights. So keep those in mind, and keep an eye out for that minimap. Rounding out the topic, it's a discussion that we'll talk about here, and this is just some general ideas and tips here for getting better and the mentality of how you play. First things first, this is something that I should stress is that it's not going to happen overnight. You got to invest time into this game. As with anything in life, these skills and tips will compound with your natural skill sets that you acquire when you simply play and learn the maps, the game, the gunplay mechanics, the meta, and so on, where you yourself as a player learn the game and the battleground. Just like anything, if you want to be a chef, you'll want to get good at cooking by staying with it. Same with sports. I know for a fact that for Call of Duty, I do get burned out sometimes, and I'll take a few days to maybe a week off, and then when I come back after that time of not playing, I'll be absolutely terrible to begin with. My aim is shaky, my eyes aren't adjusted and aren't focused. It just comes naturally over time and with practice and repetition of these tips. And also, again, knowing the maps, knowing the game, the gunplay, all that stuff really does help out. So it's going to take time. It's not going to be something that you watch this video and then tomorrow you'll be the next scumpy. You got to practice and put your time in. Outside of that, I definitely suggest playing with friends. Communication is key. I've said that so many times here throughout this life of Modern Warfare so far, and I will stick by that to the day this game ends because playing solo versus playing with a party is night and day. It is so much more difficult solo, so have friends to play with. Talk about where enemies are. Talk about how you want to approach situations and so on. Jump on with at least one other player, if not more. Then finally, the last thing we'll talk about is to keep an open mind. I think that perhaps one of the biggest things that I encounter when playing this games is sometimes I just I don't feel it I don't feel like playing and that's okay but if I were to try and force myself to play when I'm not in the zone or in the right mood well I'm not gonna achieve anything my gameplay will be sloppy and it will become unenjoyable I'll get increasingly mad frustrated whatever it may be but if that's the case for you as well where the mentality needs to be there do whatever you need to do in order to feel up to playing and then have a clear and level head to use these tips to dominate your enemies and if not it's okay just take a break come back to it at some point and start over fresh when you have the right feeling with your gameplay but anyways that's where we're gonna wrap it up here at this that's 12 tips here for how to improve your game how to improve and stay alive better how to improve your stats all that stuff so let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below is there anything in particular that you agree or disagree with here out of this video is there anything in particular you'd add to this list whatever it is feel free to let me know your thoughts but hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you drop a like down below and of course if you are new to the channel make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things modern warfare if you guys also want to follow me over on twitter and instagram those are the best places to get connected outside of youtube practically live on both those so if you guys want to strike up a conversation ask me a question whatever it may be that link is down there in the description below that said thanks so much for watching modest espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace